All right, here we go. And what makes today, ooh, wind. What makes today relevant is that it is this mile that we lose our paved path. And if the gravel paths are, that I've seen are any inclination, I'm going to be walking with this camera for about three and a half miles. I know how it's fun watching this when I'm bike, but the way those hills go, I really don't have much of a choice. The pay path that we have going on here, that we've had for the past seven miles, and it'd be like seven and a half miles, uh, it is going to end at uh, at Crooked Falls, and uh, used to be known as Horseshoe Falls, just kind of down the down the river from Rainbow Dam there. It's one of the reasons why the next four videos are going to be so long is because they are walking and I'm actually going to try to keep the walking on there. The nice thing about it is that while I'm doing this hike, I did provide a little bit of, uh, let's just say exhaustive commentary because <laughs> I was pretty, pretty exhausted. Um, and it saves me from doing this... Uh, this backtrack uh, that I usually do on my vids uh, while a video is going on. Yeah, and a lot of people say, why don't you put music on it or something? It's like, well, I really don't want to do that. Uh, I mean, I know it would probably be entertaining or whatever, make it time go by a little bit faster maybe. But I found out by putting music in the background of, uh, of videos, even if they're royalty free, uh, uh, songwriter approved, you know, things like from Kevin McLeod, that they still get third party hits on YouTube. And uh, I, I don't want any of those kind of, uh, any of those kind of legs to uh, show up on my account. But again, uh, back to this path. So this path is going to uh, to the Crooked Falls observation area, and uh, there are already uh, gravel paths around this path. And what this path does is it's kind of funny because when it's almost halfway through here, it's going to start getting on a, a decline and a curve uh, to put us at that uh, that site. That uh, that curve really takes a uh, a little bit of time out of a more straightforward route, and uh, I, I don't know why they did that. To be honest, when I was coming back uh, from from the dam, the uh, there was a trail that also leads to the observation site. Uh, from where we first started taking off here, but it's more straightforward. It basically goes right to uh, this little, uh, uh, this other smaller observation deck, and uh, and then hooks right onto the main trail here. Because I wasn't going to, even though it's a paved road, and I was coming back, I wasn't going to climb this. Uh, the circular path on its uh, on its incline, if I could find the shorter way of getting back to my vehicle. So, uh, so yeah, I took out that one little path, and it probably saved me time, uh, even though it was a gravel path of uh, walking it. It's something to keep an eye out for if you're ever in the area. Uh, this is actually the longest stretch uh, 
of audio, uh, secondary audio I'm adding to here. It's just getting from one place to another so that not a lot can be really said about it, you know. Uh, the river's still uh, low, but I can tell you that once we reach the dam, even though it doesn't have the amount of water that uh, normally comes out of it when it's full, that uh, it is uh, quite a sight to see. And going on the, the trail that we're going to be going on is the only way to get to it. <laughs> so you, you can't get there by motor vehicle or anything like that. Um, I mean, there are roads that go to the dam, but they close them off with the general public. Uh, mainly because these roads are being uh, uh, used by construction crews, I guess. Uh, of which there are quite a few at the dam at the time. Crooked Falls are most distinctive during periods of high water. Both Lewis and Clark remarked that the falls had a unique appearance, which led to the naming of the falls as Crooked Falls. The captains observed that the falls were not straight like the other four falls of the Missouri River. The underlying rock has been eroded by the force of the water into a horseshoe shape. For many years, the falls were nicknamed Horseshoe Falls due to their appearance. We've already covered the condition of, uh, of the road bike that I, I ride. It's, uh, it's not in the best condition. It's not as sturdy as uh, a mountain bike would be. And the, um, I was always kind of afraid that, uh, that these thin tires and, uh, and even the thin inner tube that's in the front tire, I, I've got a thorn resistant one in the back, but the thin uh, inner tube in the front, I always was a little bit nervous that that one would actually go flat when doing these, uh, when doing these rides. If I would have been smart, I would have brought a little, taped a little bit of tissue tape to my microphones here. Not that there was any real emergency. Um, if I would have been smart, I would have brought tissue paper with me. <laughs> uh, no, the uh, I found out by doing this trail that there were no outhouses. There weren't any restrooms. Even when I got to the checkpoint, the Cochrane Dam, there weren't any restrooms there. Um, and so it meant that I had to go from where we started at Rainbow Dam and there, there was like an outhouse type restroom there. Oh, that isn't too bad. By the way, look at the train. Crossing that bridge, I would make sure. Um, and walk that four miles, or ride the half mile, walk the three and a half, come back, walk the three and a half, you know, ride the next half mile again. So eight miles uh, before I would ever see a restroom. <laughs> so, um, it, it didn't uh, present itself as an emergency or anything like that. And just kind of going along with what we're talking about there too, the uh, this path, even though I didn't see as many people, you know, as the paid path, uh, I did see a couple uh, of people, and uh, it'll be shown kind of later on. Well, mainly at the beginning of next uh, the next vid. But uh, there are still people walking these paths and uh, and bike riding them, even though I think that some of the way these people ride these uh, these difficult passes, I think that they're totally nuts. Um, so if you did have to do your business <laughs> and you didn't want to get uh, get arrested for indecent exposure, yeah, it would you would have to actually kind of go in to a ravine or something, a well-hidden spot, and uh, and do your thing. Uh, 
but uh, yeah, yeah, there are no outhouses or restrooms, and I don't understand why that is. You know, and you know they they could have at least put a secured area, you know, or something. Somewhere, someone could just a hole in the ground. Anything. <laughs> I mean, th this is roughing the people. So just, just you know, allow people to have some place to do this. Um, but again, everything turned out pretty, pretty good. I was just really anxious to get back to my pickup though when coming back from the ride and walk. Okay. They say this is a single track trail, but the other trail they gave it they give it ooh, way well maybe not. But uh I guess that one's most difficult. <laughs> You know, I think going down the sides of the hills would have been a great thing if I wasn't carrying so much baggage here. It's funny because you get two, two trails One's listed as difficult, and the other one's listed as most difficult. <laughs> so it's like, ow. Oh. Kind of wish we had an easy path. But I believe I'm still on the trail that I had lined up at home, so I'm going to keep up on this one. Yeah, these trails would have been nice with uh, like a dirt bike. Not so good with a road bike. Uh, no, as I was mentioning about the path, for the entire walk there, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, I don't think I have. Um, for the entire walk there, there were about two or three, uh, I'd say, uh, quarter mile, eighth of a mile uh, stretches that I could hop off on bike and still film adequately using this uh, camera setup. And it's true that I could have locked up my bike at the back at the uh, Crooked Falls observation point there. Still, I mean, if you look at this, there are places where we can actually ride. Speed us on our way just a little bit quicker. So then when we get to the ding yeah, declines, that's time to hop off. But when you consider that the combination of all of them was less than a mile and it's a, a four mile, uh, well, three and a half mile hike, there's a little, a little bit of comfort there, but, but very little. So, um, but it's just kind of nice when I came up on something that was pretty flat on the hill that I was able to just ride, not worry about losing like, footing or, um, uh, or needing to, um, you know, grasp the handlebars or something that would cause me to stop filming and, and concentrate with what I'm doing, like walking. One thing to mention here, uh, I would have uh, stopped uh, filming probably about a quarter mile back. Uh, well, not stop filming, but take it in as a, a mile. 
if I knew exactly where I was. <laughs> the uh, one of the miles I, I put incorrectly on my map because uh, I was taking consideration the first uh, observation point for Rainbow Dam and not the second one and so that kind of shortened up a little bit but this went this uh this walk and ride it's a, it's actually more than a mile long I just didn't know where I was at to be honest with you As soon as we get to the bottom of this hill, we're going to wrap this up as mile one. Well, mile eight. And I'm going to take a little bit of a breather. I mean, I knew the trails were leading to where I was going. I just didn't know how far down I was. And that would actually that actually becomes more evident as we get closer to the uh, closer to the dam. Note to self: Next time you go on a jaunt like this one, <laughs> tissue paper, as I mentioned before, um, and uh, maybe a bottle of water will help out. Not so much on the initial getting to where you're going, but coming back, it would have really have helped out. Um, there's something else and I can't remember what the, what else I could have brought uh, that may have uh, may have helped out a little bit. Hmm. I'm glad that I got this done though. Uh, as I mentioned where I'm at right now it's a, it's actually snowing. Um, the first uh, uh, snow of the year and uh, well the first snow of the season so it's a good thing that got this uh, got this done uh, so that the next couple posts that I put online are going to be of, uh, of this ride and I I love the way it ends up you know I I'm glad that I did it because uh, just because of uh, the look of the dam, uh, but I hope uh, I hope you're enjoying this, uh, and even if it brings a good uh, point of reference, if you've ever asked, thought to yourself, you know, I should hike that, you know, take a look at, it, you know, go go to the dam. It's like, well, this gives you a very reasonable impression on uh, on what the walk is it like so yeah water's close holes boating swimming and hunting